Hi guys, I'm Tim, design lead over here at Zerve. Today we're gonna to take a look at how to optimize GIFs for emails. GIFs are a great way to add motion into emails as well as really drive that engagement for your users. Let's go ahead and take a look. Today we'll be taking a look at how to create an awesome GIF with a nice actionable call to action, uh, an animated play button that will have a nice glow uh, emanating from that. Uh, sitting on top of a, a still there. So we use this all the time in our emails. Uh, we've actually seen an increase in engagement uh, by 100% uh, with with a nice animated uh, GIF used instead of just a, a still image uh, with that play button here. So a couple things you'll need to follow along. You'll need, first of all, an image. So what we have here is a nice uh, you know, picture of Rafi here. Amazing, amazing guy. Um, so the size, you know, this is pretty, you know, big, but you know, whatever image you can grab, that's fine. Uh, also some type of, of movie file that, that is transparent, has an alpha in the background. Uh, you'll kind of see this, um, you know, it's, it looks a little rough there. Um, oh, we have our, our play button dot, dot MOV. You can have any type of movie format that, that supports alpha uh, or transparency on there. Um, just to see what that looks like. Um, you know, you'll see all the the grains there. There it is. Um, so this is actually transparent and has lots of uh, levels of transparency there. QuickTime just kind of renders it a little bit differently. And then finally, uh, you'll need a copy of Photoshop to really follow along with this. Um, of course, you can use uh, you know really any um, any anything that is similar to Photoshop here. But uh, for today's purpose, let's go ahead and get started uh, using Photoshop. So first things first, we'll need to fire up a new document. So what I did was I just hit Command N if you're on a Mac, Control N if you're on a Window uh, machine, uh, or of course you go up and, and select File, New. Um, and we're gonna select and set up our Photoshop document for this. So the first thing, um, with every standard um, Finish for Emails uh, template, uh, the width of that, that max width of the, the images um, or, or the emails are 580 pixels there. So we'll probably want it to be somewhere within that range. Um, and let's just let's just say 300 pixels high. Um, you know, the pixels, you know, 72 per pixels per inch is fine, um, as well as the, the types of color mode is going to be RGB. Um, so you're going to want to make sure that um, it's four screens there. Um, so everything else is looking pretty good. We can optimize this, you know, if we really want to get into it, but let's just go ahead and get, get started there. So, um, we are now in a blank Photoshop document. This is using Photoshop CC 2017, as you can kind of see up above. This is going to be very similar to the other versions of Photoshop. So, you know, if you have some of those older versions, uh, this should, you should be able to follow right along there. So, Let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. You can see on our stage, we have basically nothing on our layer here. Uh, so you want to make sure you see both the layers uh, window, and then because we're doing an animated GIF, also the timeline down here. Uh, so if we toggle that off, and then let's just go ahead and turn that back on, you'll see the timeline appears down here at the bottom. And it, and it does have that kind of um, flipbook-like feature that, that you'll see here in just a second. So. First things first, we'll probably want to make sure that we import our um, animation correctly. So what we can do um, is just go to File, hover over that Import, and then Import Video Frames to Layers. So you can drag in um, videos and, and drag them over Photoshop. It doesn't always properly import them, so we recommend um, using File Import. Uh, video frames to layers. So you'll get a nice dialogue of saying, you know, what what do you actually want to import? What movies do you have? Um, we can use this play button dot MOV. We'll go ahead and open that. And you can, uh, I think, preview the, the animation here. Yeah, so that's, that's the one we want. Um, and you have a couple of options here. So uh, making a frame animation, that, that really is what we want. We want each frame to be a part of this animation sequence. Um, we can also select a certain range if, we, if you want uh, using this down here I'm saying okay maybe we only want you know this section of play um, but for the case of this we want to play from beginning to end and actually have that loop over and over again so that we have this very captivating image for users to click on 
So we'll go ahead and hit OK and everything's looking good. Um, now, I, this is a little funky with how to export, especially in the alpha transparencies there. Um, you're going to see a little bit of skewing. So a lot just happened when we ex imported that. Um, you're going to see the timeline down at the bottom. You're going to see all the different frames of that movie. So it looks like there's 31 frames. And then you're going to see all the layers over here on the right. Now, you may notice, hey, this is a little skewed. This isn't you know, looking good. And that's because um, Photoshop was really trying to figure it out and just kind of guess on what the best aspect ratio is. Uh, because we know, you know what a circle is and what this should look like, a quick fix is just to select everything in the Layers panel over here. Hit Command-T to transform it. And you know, hit Alt and just kind of drag this down until we get that shape that we want. So bumped it down just a little bit, and now everything should be updated and looking good. Um, so just a, just a quick fix there to make sure everything is imported correctly. Um, so what you can do in the timeline, these are reflected of these layers on the right. Um, so automatically, Photoshop will take the layers from start all the way to the end, which is uh, bubbled up at the top there. And it really just translates that into these frames here. Uh, you do have timeline controls down at the bottom where you can click play. And you can actually see it'll, it'll try as fast as it can to run through the different animation sequences here. Uh, and you can start to see that you, you do get that layer. It's much, much crisper than um, you know, what we saw before uh, with, with QuickTime trying to render that there. So that is just looping and running through that, and that's exactly what we want. However, we do want to import a nice background still here. So at this point in time, if you have a similar, um, you know, you want to do a similar campaign, we recommend you know saving this. So Command Shift S, save as. You can just save this as, um, let's say, email CTA template. PSD. Always want to maximize compatibility, so you know other versions can open this. Um, but great, we have our template, and this is ready to go. You can distribute it to teammates, um, and they'll be able to update pictures and and different stills through that background, so that you have a very custom image uh, per email campaign. So now we we want to put Rafi in this image. So. Uh, right now we had everything selected previously. You can just click on a layer. Um, let's go ahead and click on layer one, which is that bottom layer. And let's create a new layer. So you can either click this button down here to create a new layer, or you can use the hotkeys. I'm a big hotkey fan. Uh, Command shift in or control shift in to create a new layer. Uh, all the default uh, layer settings are fine. Uh, we can be nice and specific. We want to name this layer as picture. And you can see it goes right down there, right above layer one. Uh, so we'll actually want to pull this down to the very bottom so that it rests beneath all of the, the things there. So we don't want any flicker, which could, which could um, kind of mess, mess this up. So with this, if we just kind of move everything away and see our desktop, you can actually just drag in that picture of Rafi there. So we're able to drag in, we have that bottom layer selected, just drag it right onto the stage, and it's getting ready to load in there. Um, so we probably want to make sure this is nice and um, you know fill on the stage. Maybe we can adjust it just a little bit um, so you can see him there, and hit enter. And now that is placed. We have officially placed this image on this bottom layer. Photoshop knows that this is a new layer that we want to keep down there. It's not part of this animation sequence that we had already established, so it's just always going to show by default. And you can clearly see it reflected in the timeline down here. So this is each of the state, think of like a flipbook moving through this. So you can see uh, Rafi is uh, there the whole time. And if we play this, you can see as slow as it's moving, um, you know, you have that picture there and he is, he's there the whole time. So that's exactly what we want. Um, so now we want to export it. So it's really simple to do that. Um, just make sure that you, you make that new layer. Uh, nothing is really, no, no other layer is selected there. Um, and that will, will prevent any other headaches that, that you may have there. So um, the next step is to uh, save for web, um, which is, let's see, 
think they have the export now. Uh, save for web. It's Alt Shift Command S, or as some refer to it as the claw. Just go ahead and click on that, or use the hotkeys there. And uh, this is where we really want to optimize and make sure our GIFs are looking good. Um, so what you can do is move down to the GIF settings. We want to make sure that it does animate. So once we do that, we're feeling pretty good. Um, however, you can see that uh, there's some interesting things happening already. So we do have our GIF selected. Uh, we want our uh, color um, uh, preferences to be selective. Uh, we want to bump up those colors. Um, GIFs really try to cut corners because they could get very, very large. Um, it's loading like a flipbook each image uh, as a page as if it was a flipbook. So images can get pretty big pretty quickly there. So if we bump up to um, 256, you can already start seeing a crisper, uh, crisper version. Um, and yeah, you can just kind of play around with the settings uh, from here. So the the diffusion or dither algorithm, I, I believe, is is the difference of what what this you know uh, Photoshop wants to do with the differences of, of maybe it's not quite sure the exact color to pick. How is it going to you know deal with that? Um, you know that's fine. Uh, we can leave transparency in there. It actually, if you uncheck it, it actually bumps up the. Uh, size of the file down here. So this is something that you'll always want to um, you know, keep an eye on before you export. If we go back up here and add our transparency, it kicks it down to 207 kilobytes, which is pretty lightweight. Uh, what you want to do for emails is definitely keep um, your GIFs as low, um, you know, file size, as lightweight as possible, while still maintaining as much um, you know, crispness and, and visual integrity, right? That image integrity that we want. Uh, there. Um, so definitely recommend to try to capture all the colors that you possibly can. Uh, keep the lossy or, or kind of um, the amount of, of guessing or compression down to zero. We want it to be as accurate as possible. As we bump this up, um, you know, it'll save file size, but you won't have really as good of, of an image to, to click on. And really, we want, we want our users to look, see this crisp image, and really, excuse me, engage and click on this. We do want our width to be 580 pixels wide because that is the, the max width of that um, uh, email template there. We could double it up and really optimize for retina. Um, just, you know, through here, we could increase the percentage by 200%. Hit tab and you'll see it try to think and... Um, you know, figure out all the different things and yeah, already bumping it up. You can see we're at about half, half a megabyte there. Uh, you see some banding and some kind of speckles in the background, but overall it's not too bad. The big difference that you're going to notice on both file size and image quality is once you start bumping down uh, the amount of colors that we use there. So let's just half the colors right now. You start seeing Okay, it's not horrible, but you still see more of the banding happening right there. Um, and if if we do kick it down to 64, you can see already the file size has dropped by significantly, but also the quality. You can see this nice shadowing. Uh, it has kind of these dots or kind of speckled uh, effect there. Uh, we don't want that to happen. So um, it's always kind of best to uh, have that 256 or the, the max amount of colors there. Um, great, so everything's looking good. We can export it at twice the size. You're gonna wanna be careful with how you import that, um, just moving forward. Uh, so actually, we'll, we'll dial it back down to 100% just in case. Right, and that, that way we have our really, really light file. Um, and then finally, the animation. Uh, we want to make sure that this loops forever. So with GIFs, you're able to uh, tell it, hey, I, I just want it to play once. I'm going to play forward and then reverse, all sorts of different looping options. Uh, we'll, we'll want to just do it forever, right? Test it out. Um, it will go through and load very slowly, you know, what this looks like. It's trying really hard. It's loading all these different images um, at, at, you know, real size before it exports this. So... 
Um, this isn't the exact speed that's going to happen there. You hit stop. Um, you can see that we're at 39 seconds at um, 56.6 kilobytes per second. This is not the length of the actual animation. This is how long the image will take to download at 56 kilobytes a second. So if you're really interested on it, um, you know maybe we have super fast internet. And this takes two seconds to load. So um, you know, very, very lightweight. And this is where when we're thinking about email, there's a lot of, of engagement on mobile. So I want to make it as lightweight as possible. So everything's looking good. We'll go ahead and click save. We'll make sure it's on our desktop and we'll say, you know, this is, let's just call it click Rafi dot gif. Just hit enter. Uh, and then that's exported there. And we have our image ready to go. So we double click on it and open it. Um, preview wants to go step by step on this. Uh, let's see. There you go. If you just hit spacebar on a Mac uh, or open it in, in different um, in a different image viewer, you'll be able to see that there. So you can see it's probably going to be around this size, and you get the nice crisp uh, uh, you know image. So that's it. Super simple. A uh, couple of gotchas again. Uh, be careful with how you import the um, that that static. Um, or stationary image there, you're also able to um, manipulate the timeline if you really want. So let's say halfway through for, for whatever reason, you know, just for the point of this um, you know, tutorial, if you want, you can actually turn off Rafi. <laughs> you can make him disappear for a little bit of, of the timeline there. So as we move throughout this, you'll see that he'll flash. That's not what we want. We'll just go ahead and, and go back, undo all of that, and uh, keep Rafi in there. So that's looking good. Um, but just so you know, you can go frame by frame. Uh, you can draw on this. You can create different layers. You can activate multiple layers based on each of these states. A lot of really cool things and powerful things you can do with Photoshop. Um, but again, this is just the tool of choice. Uh, best practices are to keep your email uh, GIF as light as possible while also maintaining uh, that, that image quality and fidelity there. All right, and you just learned how to optimize your GIFs for emails. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, for every new subscriber, the Yeti will get a taco. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, see you next time.